Good morning, my friends. So, how are you? Happy New Year. Continued Happy New Year. Uh, today is uh, a beautiful, cold morning in uh, New York City. And what I thought I'd do today is take a little break from some of the abstract ideas in MetaHuman, but still continue our journey from human to MetaHuman and talk about uh, something very practical, especially in these perilous times of conflict, war, terrorism, climate change, eco-destruction, poison in the food chain, mechanized uh, death and weapons of mass destruction, internet cybernetic hacking, internet hacking, cyber hacking, cyber warfare, all in all, we seem to be in trouble. So this is a lack of creativity. And uh, the first thing I would like to say, um, as I welcome you here, Carrie, Natalie from uh, London, Marie from uh, Dublin, and all my friends across the world, uh, as you come on board, and I'm waiting for some more of you to join, uh, Almi, Harvey, Harvey, Puneet Sharma from Delhi, and uh, Kiran uh, Vadavali, who says, hello, Puneet Sharma, good evening to you, sir. Kiran, hello, in Austin. Gabriel Perez uh, in Puerto Rico. Jennifer Horner in Illinois. Paige Smith. Um, Thank you all for joining. We're up to about 400. As soon, Gabrielle from Germany, Magda from the Netherlands, Lynn Palmer says hello, Happy Santosh says hello, Carol says hello from Costa Rica, John from Milwaukee, and uh, Sandra from Canada, and all of us here. You know, we're all here to um, join together. Uh, to create a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier world. And I don't care where we are in our political or religious ideology, but I think we all agree that uh, right now uh, we need creative solutions. We need to prevent conflict and war in any form whatsoever. We need to find peace and prosperity for all and we need to be anchored in creativity. And so today I thought I'll uh, focus on this. Hi, Dion from Scotland. Okay, so let's focus on this. Uh, the first thing I would like to say is, you know, our language influences, uh, influences everything that we perceive. And the metaphor of war is a metaphor of violence. And yet we're so used to it. We say war against drugs, war against poverty, war against poverty, war against uh, uh, war, war against people, war in the family, war against cancer, etc., etc. I would suggest that first of all, we get rid of this metaphor altogether. Uh, war may solve things uh, in the short run, but in the long run, it um, never really um, solves anything. Winners become losers in the long run, losers become winners, and um, it goes back and forth. And you know, the war heroes on one side are the criminals, war criminals on the other side. All depends on who wins in the short term. So let's uh, try and focus on nine principles today, nine principles nine principles on conflict resolution and preventing war on any scale with yourself, with your family, with your friends, with your community, with your nation, with the world, with your so-called enemies. And um, uh, coming to this whole uh, word enemy, I think one of the first thing to do is to rephrase the word enemy. Hi Lilian from Belgium. Hi my friends from Pakistan. Really good to see you. Hi, uh, Sita. Um, 
Okay, sorry for the break. So first of all, let's get rid of the metaphor war. Uh, let's think of creative solutions. And let's also realize that our so-called enemy can be reframed. Your so-called enemy in many ways, when you get to know them, we'll find they're just like you. Hi, Tina from Philippines. Uh, so, uh, hi, Brenda from Tijuana. Okay, so uh, your so-called enemy um, can be reframed first as an adversary, then as a competitor, then as somebody that you can collaborate with, and then as your teacher, and then finally as part of your team uh, to actually create more peace and prosperity for yourself, for them, and for the rest of the world. Okay, so let's start with nine principles. Uh, thank you, Tammy from South Africa. It seems like the whole world is here and we're almost up to a thousand people. Hi, Madhu from Noida. Hi, Rachel. Hi, uh, Astha Pranam. Hi, Diane. Okay. We're up to a thousand people, so let's go over the nine principles. And if you want and you like these, then we can elaborate on these as we move along. And if you like this idea of how to prevent war, please send me a like button and uh, please share this with others. But if you like this idea of how to prevent war, resolve conflicts and come up with creative solutions and create peace and prosperity for everyone and you want me to continue on this, I'll be happy to do so. Okay? So, hi Ramanan Dixit. We're talking about how to prevent war, resolve conflicts and bring peace and prosperity to all. Okay, so let me talk about the nine principles. Number one, treat your enemy, adversary, competitor, uh, ultimately collaborator with respect. If you don't treat them with respect, you lose them before you even start. Okay, so always, doesn't matter how you perceive your enemy in the beginning, so-called enemy. Uh, be polite, be deferential, be respectful, display good manners and courtesy. As long as you do that, you have moved to step one. So that's step one. In any conflict, be respectful, deferential, polite, have good manners, be courteous, and you're off to a good start. Doesn't matter who the adversary is. Hello, my friends, Gulmar from Turkey as well. Okay, point number two, first was respect. Point number two, in any conflict, recognize that there is the perception of injustice on both sides otherwise there wouldn't be a conflict okay so um, come to that agreement that you feel treated unjustly but also agree with your adversary that uh, there's possibility that they feel injustice as well i moderate these conflict resolution sessions so i know they work okay so number two recognize injustice on both sides Number three, um, be prepared to forgive and ask for forgiveness. There's nothing more uh, courageous than that. Uh, being vulnerable, expressing uh, your desire to be forgiven, and expressing your intention to forgive others is uh, a very good way to bond with another person. And even if you feel that the other person doesn't deserve forgiveness, forgive. Forgive means let go of your desire for retribution, vengeance, your hostility, wish them well. But most importantly, forgive, not because you think the other person deserves forgiveness, but because you deserve peace. So that's step three. You remember the first three now? Um, Number one, um, treat your competitor, adversary, collaborator with respect. Number two, recognize injustice on both sides. Number three, um, ask for forgiveness and express your intention to forgive the other. Okay, so now we come to number four. 
refrain from belligerence. Belligerence is basically a sign of um, bullying, being a bully. And uh, bullies are always belligerent. So refrain from uh, belligerence because um, the only way to tackle a bully with uh, belligerence is through true courage. And true courage comes when you follow the instructions or the rules I'm sharing with you, being respectful, recognizing injustice on both sides, asking for forgiveness and being ready to forgive because we all deserve peace. Okay, now number four was refrain from belligerence. Belligerence. Belligerence is a sign of uh, being a bully and bullies are cowards. If you stand up to them, uh, they back off. But you stand up to them uh, through conscious communication and you stand up to them through dignity and respect and deference and politeness and courtesy. But belligerence uh, will never get you anywhere. Okay, so that's number four. Number five, understand emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is being in touch with your own feelings, being in touch with the feelings of another and learning conscious communication. What am I seeing? What am I observing? What am I feeling? What's the unmet need here? What's the best way to fulfill this need? And emotional intelligence also be, means being in touch with another person's feeling, conscious communication, empathy, compassion, kindness, love, etc. And I would be very happy to continue on how to cultivate social and emotional intelligence in uh, future, uh, future communications here. Okay, so that's number, what is it? Number five understand social emotional intelligence and use it. Um, and number six, understand your values, but ask your so-called adversary, competitor, enemy, collaborator to express their values. Ask them about their childhood, ask them about their parents, ask them about how they fell in love and what love means for them. Ask them about their relationships, ask them about who they are, ask them about what they want, ask them about what their purpose is, ask them about, you know, what did they have as a higher calling. In other words, maximize their capacity for greatness. They will love you if you do that. Okay, so that is very important as part of our journey to understand our own values. Who are my heroes? Who are my mentors? What uh, the qualities I look for in a good friend. Who do I trust? Um, what are the inspiring stories I've read in history, mythology, religion? Um, what makes me happy? Uh, what is the value of attention and appreciation <clears throat> and affection and acceptance? Okay, so the more you declare your values, and the more you ask other people, even your adversaries, to declare their values, you'll realize that ex except for context and meaning and circumstances, at the deepest level, you share similar values. Okay? You all want, we all want the same things. We want peace, harmony, laughter, love, etc. Okay? So declare your values and share your values. So that's number six. Number seven, uh, in general, refrain from um, ideological, political, or universal uh, um, discussions. People get all tied up when you take sides in uh, ideological decisions. It's not important whether you're Democrat or you're conservative or you're neutral or whatever. Um, doesn't matter. You have your own opinion, others have their own opinion, but we both want the same thing. So, in general, refrain from ideological, political, and religious arguments. Okay, so that would be number seven. Number eight would be 
recognize that uh, there is fear on both sides. In any conflict, there is fear on both sides. Don't be afraid to express your fear. Don't be afraid to ask your adversary what they're afraid of and don't, um, don't uh, actually, um, uh, don't uh, uh, avoid vulnerability. It's a sign of supreme confidence. And then the last thing is, uh, uh, number nine, uh, do not prove the other person wrong. Don't insist on being right. Insist on getting what you want. Uh, give up being right and 95% of all your issues will disappear. Okay, so this is my nine step uh, to conflict resolution. Avoiding war, resolving conflicts, and once we've done this, we can then together create a vision for all of us, for peace, economic collaboration, prosperity, instead of going to war with another country, why not collaborate on new technologies for clean energy, for example, and uh, help the whole world and, uh, and uh, get rid of our uh, tribal tendencies for ethnocentrism, bigotry, hatred, prejudice, and war. So if there are any national leaders uh, anywhere listening to this, um, please uh, think of these nine principles. Respect, injustice on both sides, forgiveness, uh, not being belligerent, understanding emotional intelligence, going into deeper values, um, refraining from ideological and political arguments, um, understanding fear on both sides, and finally, not proving the other person wrong. They'll never forgive you. Okay, give up being right. Look at what you really want, and you're on your way. So these are the nine steps as a beginning, and uh, we can go further. You can apply these nine steps in your personal relationships, with your family, your friends, your community, in schools, in Palestine, in Israel, in the Middle East, in Iran, in the US, in Korea, um, wherever you want. We are human beings and we are creative beings. Let's get rid of metaphors of war and violence and um, let's all together take responsibility um, as leaders to move in the direction of a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier and joyful world. And if you like this, I can continue on this and the soul of leadership and how to unfold um, the greatness that is inherent in all of us. Maximize the greatness that is already there in all of us. All of us. No exceptions.